Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Wendy Jo. We're going to jump in today and I'm going to show you how you can create a mock-up for your print-on-demand clothing where, you know, you don't carry a whole bunch of inventory at your house, but you want to have all of these custom mock-ups for all of your different designs and you don't want to buy all of them, right? So this is a step-by-step -step on how I do that. It's so easy and it prevents you from having to purchase a whole bunch of stuff. So this is a shirt that we sold a couple of years ago um, and we sold a ton of them. And so I use this as my example. I'm actually going to share my screen with you guys and show you exactly how I can take this shirt, even though it's been worn a lot, and turn it into a mock-up for every black sweatshirt that we sell. So here we go. So my favorite tool for this is GIMP. We use GIMP for literally everything. We um, use it for all of our editing. So it's a free open source software and I highly recommend you try it out. So we have a Mac, but obviously this works on both PC and Mac. And um, yeah, so let's just jump into this. So I actually went into my laundry room and I took some pictures of this shirt hanging up in there. And then I actually went over and I edited it, uh, edited it just in my images. And I do wanna show you what I did just because I want you to remember that this is something you need to do for everything that you list on your website. So I changed the title of it from image to no touch sweatshirt, which obviously that's what I would list it as if I was going to list it. And then under my tags that no one can see, I put in Ooh David sweatshirt pullover Schitt's Creek David Rose no touch. Um, I'm obviously not adding bathroom makeover to this one. That's for another image I did, but I add all of those tags. And here's the deal. You cannot put these words in your description publicly. You cannot put them in the title. You cannot put them anywhere visible anywhere on your website because they are copyrighted. However, these tags are hidden within the image, but will still pull up when someone is searching for Schitt's Creek apparel. So this is just a little FYI, because these are copyrighted terms, I can add them hidden inside the tags here, but I cannot put them publicly anywhere out there. Um, so I did that to the image first, and then I actually just went into the tools on here. I hit adjust color, and I played around with the images, and I like to add um, the sepia tone, which this just reset to normal, but I actually adjust the sepia on this a little bit just to give it that little bit of vintage look. Um, so make the picture look how you want it to look, and then all you're gonna do is simply drag it over here and into GIMP. You see that green plus sign, and that's going to add a new layer. And I've got several layers down here um, that you can see just because I already kind of got this all set up for you guys. But now that I have dr drug the image into GIMP, I'm gonna take this and make it look like that. Um, and that is actually the same image. So what we do is we go over here to this cloning tool and you're going to select the opacity that you want. Depending on what color you're working on, you're gonna to wanna to play around with the opacity. If I was working on a white or cream colored shirt, the opacity would be lower because I wouldn't want to be super careful um, as I'm doing it to make sure that um, it's cohesive looking. Cause like, um, for instance, you wouldn't wanna take a solid here and go over this wrinkle because this is what adds definition to the image itself. So I'm gonna pull from right in here and I'm just going to take out this image. I use a, this, this brush here with the 0.025 hardness, but you can use whichever one you want to. Being on a black shirt, I could definitely um, make it a little bit harder. And then the size, you again, you can adjust to whatever you want. I like this size just because it's pretty easy to work with and I'm comfortable. On the Mac, I hit the Command key and then I click my mouse wherever I'm gonna copy the color from. And now it is locked in to there. Now it will move with me as I go. So I'm actually gonna move up here a little bit with it because as I drag, you'll see that circle is picking up color from, hang on just a second, let me undo those two things because I'm on the wrong layer. You wanna make sure that your layer is selected correctly. I was drawing on a different layer. So it's gonna drag with me as I do it. So I'm going to just use my mouse and go over this image over and over and over again. So that's, um, I'm actually gonna increase the opacity because it 
there's no reason for it being on black. It's just so easy to cover. Um, and basically you're just gonna go over all of this and edit out whatever was on your shirt. So I buy samples of my products. I don't um, carry everything in stock. Whenever we're getting close to Christmas, my best sellers, I do order in bulk from Printful so that I have my items in stock and I know that my customers are going to get them when they need them by. But throughout the rest of the year, I don't typically carry a lot of stock. Um, I let Printful do everything because they package it, they ship it, they deal with all of those types of things and all I have to do is deal with customer service, um, which honestly, people will say there's a lot of um, customer service with print on demand, but I have not found that to be true. If you are accurate in your listings and you are, um, you know, you put a sizing chart and those types of things, you're not gonna have any more customer service with this than you are with say digital downloads. Digital downloads, the thing, the customer service I run into with that is people not knowing how to follow the directions and download the digital items or use the templates. So you're gonna have a little bit of customer service with all of these passive income streams, but it is minimal compared to what you would have um, if you were printing everything yourself and shipping everything yourself, etc. cetera. Um, okay, so now I've taken that image and I have a blank black shirt. Obviously I can do this with any color shirt that I have. So if I have t-shirts or whatever, um, I can I can edit all of my images this way. So I'm gonna go up now and I'm gonna decrease the size of my brush. And I'm actually gonna remove this tag because what I'm gonna do, because this is a black shirt, now if I had a different color shirt, I would actually take two images. I would take a picture of the back of the shirt and the front of the shirt. But because this is black, you literally cannot tell what is the front and what is the back. And so now I'm gonna be able to create a front and a back image on this shirt and use it to upload to my website. It is literally that simple. So I've already drug in a design, um, let me see right here. Now I wanna show you, when I drug this design in, it was actually black. If I drag this image in, it's black. So you're gonna go into Hue Chroma under colors and you're gonna take the lightness and bring it all the way to white. That's just a little trick you can do. If you've created an image and you have black and not white, um, you can change it right in here. Obviously you're going to need to change it in your original design when you send it to Printful to upload onto the image. But if you're just working within GIMP and you just need to adjust a color of something, that's how you do it. So change it, hit okay and then um, then we scaled the image. So obviously this is way too big for the shirt. So we're going to make sure that you are here on the correct layer and you're gonna scale the layer. You know, make sure that this is locked. And I'm gonna take this down to a thousand and hit the tab button so that it scales it. And now I have it at a place where I can actually edit it. I'm gonna make sure that these are not locked and hit this arrow here, and then you can move this wherever you want on the shirt, which obviously I already have it on there, but I'm just gonna layer it up on top. So this is actually the back of a shirt, and I'm gonna take that one off. And um, so I've created the blank shirt, and now I can bring in whatever images I want and create mock-up after mock-up after mock-up. And this is in my own home. It's not gonna look like anyone else's mock-up out there, and um, you know, it's mine. And so obviously I didn't do a ton of editing on this. If you wanted to create more depth and those types of things, there's some things you can do inside of Canva by stacking this image and then removing the background that gives you a little bit more pop and vibrance. But for this, this is, you know, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So you add your image here and then what you can do, so that's the back. Now I want to do the front of my image. And so I'm gonna go over here and I brought in the words that are gonna go on the front of my image and voila, I have the front and I have the back. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to save as and I can put it to my desktop wherever I want to put it 
and you can title it here. Now this will save it as an X, uh, XCF, which is a GIMP file. And you want to make sure that you save the GIMP file first because what you could do is you can come back in here and you can continue to reuse this over and over. So you only have to do this editing process one time. And then once you saved it as an XCF, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to actually export it. And you're gonna export as, and you're gonna export it as a PNG. And here's where you're going to title the PNG and then after you have downloaded it and titled it, you're gonna to wanna to go in and add all of those tags to your image so that it helps in your SEO. But that is how you can create multiple images out of just one picture that you take of your own clothing. So we always have a black and a white in, in stock at all times of both the long sleeve sweatshirts as well as our t-shirts. And we do this with all of our images that way that, you know, it's obviously ours. If you want to add a watermark, you can. If you're concerned that people are going to steal your mock-ups because like this is in your home, it's obviously yours, which I mean, it would be really easy to tell if somebody's stealing your mock-ups if you see your house in somebody else's listing. But what you can do is let's pretend that this is your, um, your logo, right? So what you can do is you can decrease the opacity, which I forgot to tell you, whenever I put my images on my shirts on here, I do decrease the opacity. You can see this is down to 73% because when you print a shirt, it is not going to be as vibrant as that. It is just, it's not going to be. You want to create as close to real of a look as possible because you're creating a mock-up. I do always add a disclaimer on my website about um, making sure to realize that um, colors will differ from one computer screen to another. We do our best to present the images as you know close to the correct color as possible, but there will be variances. So we always just put a disclaimer on there. But um, back to creating a watermark or that you are on the correct layer when you're trying to move it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on this is, I'm just gonna pretend that this is my logo and I'm gonna decrease the opacity down to just something like that, where you can just barely see it. And you have the option of either making it really big and putting it, um, here, I gotta make sure that's unlocked. If something won't move for some reason, that means one of these has gotten locked and you just have to click it and unlock it. But now I can actually take this and put it over several different places on my um, image so that if someone tries to steal my images, it is at least going to have that mock-up or my watermark on it kind of everywhere. And you just kind of want it to just barely touch on things um, that are showing. So you can add that all over the place. You can even hide it down here a little bit to where, um, you know, you can see it like here, you can see it, but they may not notice it. So you can kind of hide it in different places too. Um, but again, this is my laundry room. So I'm gonna know if somebody stole the images. And then obviously whenever you go to download the image for your site, if you don't want those on there, you just hide them and do put on there the ones that you would like to show. And that is it. It's super simple. And this is how we create our mock-ups to give us those custom looks without having to pay for a whole bunch of mock-ups from someone else. So hope this helps you guys. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. And if you want to know how to set up your own print on demand store, make sure you check out this video and it will tell you exactly how we set up our print on demand shop and how we run our business through that. And uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. You guys have a good one.